everybody. Good Welcome to our church. This is the Apostolic Faith Church in Fenham Road in Peckham. For those of you that are watching us on the internet, we pray that the God who is with us here will bless you too. Um, we also want to extend our uh, gratitude to the orchestra for uh, the renditions and also to invite, if you are living close by and you would like to worship with us, please, um, the contact details on the website that you are looking at. But otherwise, um, we want you to heartily join us in the spirit as we are going to sing heartily to the Lord this morning. And Sister Alois will be leading us with the songs. Our first song is from SSNS 203, tune three, the third tune, SSNS 203. Zero three. Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Amen. We'll take verses 1, 2, 5, and 6. Verses 1, 2, 5, and 6. After the introduction by the others. <laughs> Still from the same hymn book, SSNS 699. SSNS 699. Oh, brother, life's journey beginning. We're going to take verse 1 and 3 only of this song. Verses 1 and 3 only after the introduction. <laughs> Thank you. 
is 698. Six, six, Let's listen to this. 698. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. We're going to take verse 1 and 3 again of this song, verses 1 and 3 only after the introduction. And ten, O weary heart, there is a home. Yeah. It says, O wait, meekly wait and murmur not. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We'll take verse one and four only, verse one and four only after the introduction.
Luke 8. Cast me not, O gentle Saviour. We're going to take um, verse 1, 3, and then we'll take verse 4, standing, for those of you that can stand, and after which we shall be led in prayer. So verse 1, 3, seated, and then we'll ask the orchestra to join us in verse 4, standing, and after which we shall be led in congregational prayer. SSNS 488. Eight. thank you Amen. for bringing us into thy sanctuary this morning. Amen. Lord, accept our thanks. Amen. Savior, accept our praises. Amen. For bringing us to worship you at this side of eternity to set a day apart whereby we can commune with you. We can come together in humility and bow down before you for counting us worthy for this, O oh God, please accept our thanks. Yeah. Lord, accept our praises. Yeah. We have gathered and we want you to bless us. Yeah. Lord, come down. Yeah. With your powerful hand, yeah. come down. Yeah. With your hand that is full of blessings, yeah. Lord, shower it this yeah. way. Those that came to you in those days, they didn't go back empty-handed. No. Father, our bands to be filled up today with thy, with thy powerful hands. Yes. Father, open the showers of heaven. Amen. Open the showers of heaven. Amen. When the Israelites were living in the land of Egypt, you told them, 
that they will not go out empty handed. And you did just that same for them. Their hands were full. They can look back and say, God, we thank you. Oh, Heavenly Father, in same vein today, we pray that those who are here in this holy sanctuary, you will look down in mercy, meet all their needs, meet all their needs. As we are standing here, we have different problems, but you are adequately able to solve all problems. Father, meet every need today. Solve every problem today. In thy presence is fullness of joy. We want our hearts to be filled with joy today. The power of revival. Let it spark. Spark the fire of revival. Spark the fire of revival. In the heart of everyone present, spark the fire of revival. Our Father, our garden will be devoid of joy when you are not there. But you say, where two or three are gathered in my name, yeah. you are right there in their midst yes. to grant their petition. Yeah. Every petition yeah. that will be sent to you here yeah. in this holy sanctuary yeah. today, yeah. oh God, put your stamp of approval. Yeah. Grant every petition. Yeah. You saw the problem of Anna yeah. when he went to the, in the holy sanctuary and he led her around the corner I was praying, interceding, and you said that prayer that you was praying that day that the Lord have answered. Yeah. In the same way today, yeah. answer every prayer. Yeah. Lord, answer every prayer. Yeah. If there is anything, oh God, in the hearts of, of people here that are not equal, things that will not make prayer to be answered, we plead the blood of Jesus. Yeah. We plead the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Wash every heart. Wash every heart. Wash every heart. Wash every heart, oh Lord. Our Lord and our God, we want people to come here and while they're going out, their hearts will be full of rejoicing. Father, today, make it a day of salvation, a day of sanctification. A day of Holy Ghost baptism. Amen. A day of healing. Amen. A day of provision. Amen. A day of solving all problems. Amen. All kind of problems. Amen. Because there is no problem that beyond the reach of the power of our God. And so, oh God, as many as are here this morning and are looking up to the throne of grace, Lord, perform a miracle. Amen. You are a miracle walking God. And so we are believing you this morning that we want to see miracles perform. And today's service to make a turnaround in the lives of people. Lord, do it for us. Oh God, do it for us. Oh God, do it for us. We remember a choir member that are in Aberdeen this morning want you to perform, oh God, be with them there. Lord, come down there. Bring many people there. Reach on to them, oh God. The voice of this season, because you are the reason for this season, the voice of this season that they will play it and sing in it, oh God, reach out to sounds of it. Reach out to people. Powerfully. Do so. Bless that ministry. Let your name be glorified. And oh God, once again here, the preacher of this up morning envelope him. From on high, envelope him. Let him take from heaven and give to your people. And break the shackles of sin. Break the power of sin. Break blockages. Do oh God. Walk through this congregation. Walk through. Move through. Move in our midst. Move in our midst, oh God. We want joy in this sanctuary today. Joy in this place today. The God of joy, come down. The God of joy, come down. The God of power, come down. Your name will be glorified forever. Thank you for answering our prayers, for we pray in Jesus' name.
scripture reading is taken from Jeremiah chapter 21. Read just verse 8. Jeremiah 21 verse 8. And unto this people thou shalt say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. Let 
let's open our books. Book of Job, chapter 14. Job 14. We read from verse 1. Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. May God help us this morning. Amen. We are going to consider this topic the wide and narrow gate. And the interpretation is the way of life and the way of death. Everyone is on a spiritual journey as they travel the, through this life. Whether religious or not, we are, tr we are traveling a spiritual path. Every day, as we woke up, we make choices that affects the direction in which we are headed. Many people think that there are so many ways. In other sense, they are correct. There are all kinds of religions. But in the other sense, there is only two ways. And it is also impossible to take a wrong way and end up in heaven. It is also impossible to take a heavenly way and end up in hell. But what we know is one wrong, one wrong turn on the spiritual highway of life will lead us into hell. This life is a brief between the very long eternities. It's just a brief pause between the everlasting eternities which are to come after this world. We are surrounded by death since the day we were conceived. Loved ones pass away. Friends leave this world every each day. There are funerals all over. Even today as we are in this sanctuary, people are passing on. We know also that it's going to happen to us. As I am standing here, I'm a grave. There are so many graves here. As our jobs, or, uh, job says, we will not continue in this earth. Our life is so brief. Sometimes we think we will prolong and continue to live. But the Bible says we will not continue on this earth. In his sermon on, on the Mount, 
Jesus spoke of those two ways. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 7. That's our main text. We read from verse 18. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And men there be which go in thereat. 14. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. We have get the gates, the two gates, the wide and the narrow. And behind the gates, there are corresponding paths, ways, that correspond with, the, with each gate. May God help us. Amen. Each with its own beginning. Each gate, it has its own beginning. Each with its own end. Yeah. One way is heavily populated. Mm. The other is traveled by, the, by few. Why? Because these fleshly bodies will resist the confines of the narrow way. These fleshly, these sinful natures will find the narrow way too tight and constrictive. That's why it's, it's difficult. It's not an easy road. Because we are carrying this flesh. If it's not transformed, definitely the road will be difficult. It's not easy, but it is attainable. Yes. We can walk through. When we go home, heaven way is narrow. The gate is straight, which means it's tight and narrow. When we go through it, yes, there and there we can find some bruises. So that's the way. May God help us. <laughs> The question is, where are you in your spiritual journey, soul journey? Are you on the right way? Are you heading the right direction? To answer such questions, let us look closely at what Jesus said. We want to go to these two verses in chapter 7 in detail. Jesus said there are two gates. The wide gate for wide is the gate. This is the gate represent, this is the gate which represents the beginning to the way that led to destruction. It is described as white. Evidently, it is a gate which allows many to enter without sacrifice on their part. It's just, you just go in. 
no sacrifice at all. It does not require giving up anything. You don't have to give up anything. You come as you are, worship as you are, no change whatsoever. That's the way it gets. Anyone can enter. May God help us. Amen. One is allowed to bring along whatever baggage they desire. For example, in this world, in this time of materialism, carry your materialism. Even now the, the gospel, the preachers have changed their preaching. They are preaching about materialism. <laughs> but the Bible stated clearly in, in Mark 4 verse 9, 19 says, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the last of other things entering in choke the word and it become cometh unfruitful. Materialism chokes the word. May God help us. Amen. Let's read, go to Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter six, verse six. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Yes. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. So the things which we spend time on are useless because we don't carry them. If we die today, we leave them. And having food and raiment, let us be there, there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hateful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through the many sorrows. May God help us Amen. to resist the spirit of materialism. Amen. For materialism is the exact opposite of that of contentment. May God help us. Amen. This the why the 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 the, the white gate. All kind of people can enter there. Prejudice, hatred, unforgiving spirit. Believe whatever you want to believe. Unfortunately, this gate is loved by many. Yes. That's the unfortunate thing. Mm. Many love this gate. Mm. <laughs> For there are no restrictions concerning belief and behavior. It doesn't 
require you to resist temptation. You go along. Whatever comes in your way, if it is bribes, fornication, they enter through the gate. It accepts everything. Mm. There is no restriction at all. No. May God help us. Amen. The unfortunate thing is that this road leads to destruction. Mm. And it is loved by many. Mm. May God help us. Amen. The narrow gate. Matthew 7, verse 13. This gate represents the beginning of or starting point to the way that leads to life. Mm. Why is it narrow? <coughs> because it is the gate which requires self-denial and obedience. To obey is very difficult. Some people can say, I only obey the scriptures, but I don't mind about the church policy. <clears throat> if you cannot obey, if you are not obedient to little things, how can you be obedient to big things? May God help us Amen. to be obedient. Amen. In this gate, there is no room for consuming desire of earthly things, earthly goods. Matthew 6 says, 19 to 20, no desire for earthly goods. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. May God help us. Amen. In this road, there is no unforgiving spirit, unforgiving spirit. I hope we, we don't have any enemies here. We don't have grudges here. If we, we are going through the narrow gate, if you've got a grudge with somebody, you are too big for the gate. You won't fit. There is no baggage there. It must be you and Jesus. There's a song which is sung that on the Jericho Road. It's only you and Jesus. No baggage, but you. May God help us Amen. to be ourselves and Jesus only. Amen. To leave all baggages. There's no self-righteousness. On forgiveness. Chapter 6.14 says, For if we ye Forgive men their trespasses. Your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not them their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So, for there's a it's conditional. Our for for God forgive us our sins. It's conditional 
upon that we forgive our enemies forgiveness. So in this narrow gate, if you don't forgive, you, you cannot fit. Self-righteousness. There is no self-righteousness. God give, make us righteous. It's only God through salvation, through sanctification, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and making sure we have entered through the narrow gate. No matter how difficult it is, may God help us. Amen. Chapter 6, verse 1 says, Take heed that ye do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise you have no reward for your father which is in heaven. We, are, we must be righteous to God. And if you are righteous to God, even our fellow men will be righteous. May God help us to be holy Amen. and to live a holy life Amen. and to enter through the, the narrow gate. Amen. Let's avoid the wild one. It's not about majority. The spiritual pilgrimage, it's not about many. It's about you. You alone. It's not an Israel. It's not about majority. Yes, elections and everything is about majority, even if they are wrong. The majority, they just take it. But in heaven, it's not about many. May God help us. Amen. As Jesus has stressed in his sermon on the mount, these two gates are only the starting point. Let us now take a close look at the fact that there are two ways. The broad way, broad is the way, Matthew 7, verse 13. The way that leads to destruction is broad because it allows any behavior one desires. No need for reformation. No need for change in one's lifestyle. No transformation. Come as you are, stay as you are, die as you are. But when you enter through the, main, the narrow gate, you need to, to be transformed. You need to be a new creature, a different person altogether. Otherwise, you cannot enter. But this broad way fits anything. May God help us. Amen. Many people love this path. They think they are free. Yes, there's freedom. There's no restriction at all. They believe they are open-minded. That's the worldly thinking. Open-minded. May God help us. They view themselves tolerant of others in this same way. I know in our world these days, people are being taught to be tolerant of others. It's nice to be tolerant of others, but not in the wrong way. May God help us. Amen. The constricted way. Difficult, the 
is the way. The picture is of a narrow and a difficult path between two cliffs. There's a cliff there, there's a cliff here. The way is narrow. If you just make a mistake, you fall down this way or that way. But it is not impossible to walk on it. With Jesus holding our hand, yes. we can go through the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Don't worry about the bruises. The way to heaven is full of bruises. Jesus walked it. He was bruised. He bled. He died with the wounds. May God help us. Yeah. We must not expect to walk through this narrow way without bruises. We have to be bruised to enter, to fit. May God be, help us to, 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 to enter yes. through the constricted, to walk in the constricted way. The way that leads to life is difficult because it requires a righteousness that exceeds of many religions. Sometimes we are people, young people compare with other religions. Why are ours is too narrow-minded? Why are we too strict? It's not about other religions. It's not about your brother and sister, what he's doing. It's about looking at Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus is the standard of righteousness, not our fellow men. May God help us to look unto Jesus, who is the emblem of righteousness. May God help us. Yeah. It's not about others. It's not about other religions. Let them do what they do. But the narrow way needs you and Jesus. Yeah. May God help us. Yeah. For, I say, for I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in, in no case and at the kingdom of God. Unless your righteousness exceeds your brother, your sister, whomever you look at, you shall not enter the kingdom of God. Because the standard of righteousness is Jesus. Amen. He walked the walk. He talked the talk. He lived it. Mm. May God, God help us. Amen. Sometimes we make a mistake and set our standard of hum on human beings. Mm. May God help us. Amen. Oh, our ministers. Yes, they are there to set example. As Paul sometimes said, look at me. But the emblem of righteousness is Christ mm -hmm. himself. May God help us. Amen. Because of its difficulty, men chose not to travel its path. Because it's difficult. The tendency of men is to look for the easy path. But easy paths lead you to destruction. 
It will destroy you. May God help us. Amen. They think it, it is too confining. Young people, this gospel is pure. Yes. If you follow it, you enter heaven. Yes. It will give you all what you want. Absolutely. It's not confining. It's confining because it gives you everything you want. May God help us. Amen. The wide road will destroy your life. May God help us. Amen. It's better to be bruised mm. and at the end to have the pleasure of heaven. Mm. When we enter heaven, Jesus will look at the, our bruises and wipe them gently mm. and comforting us and the joy we will have in heaven will forget that we are, we are bruised once. Mm. May God help us. Amen. They think it is too narrow-minded. That's the language of young people. Jesus described the two gates and the two ways. He also reminds us that there are two groups. The many. There are many who go in by it. That's the fearful thing. <laughs> As we are seated here, we are many. But how many of us are going through the narrow gate? It's another thing to be here or to be preaching. It's another thing to be walking in the narrow, narrow way. May God help us. Amen. We have seen the reasons why this is so. The entrance is wide. It's easy to get to get to get in. Because it is the way that says, come as you are. No change. The way is broad. Make your own rules. Believe what you want. Do what you want. Can it, that, can it be the gospel of Jesus Christ? The gospel has rules. Yes. There is a clear path and clear rules to those who want to walk and make heaven their home. May God help us. Amen. This is the way people travel by default, unless they are actively looking for or seeking the narrow path. The few. There are few who find it. That's the thing that troubles me. That makes me afraid. Whether am I on the right way? Am I one of the few in that road? Just ask yourself. Search. Look into your life and say, am I one of the few? There are few who find it as proven true so often in the past. During Noah's time, the millions lost in the flood versus the eight who were saved. The thousands of thousands who lost, who were, who lost in, in the wilderness versus the two who ended in the promised land, Joshua and Caleb. All the rest, all the elders perished in the desert because they didn't walk the walk. 
They, they didn't. They, they wanted the things of Egypt. May God help us. Amen. Jesus said in Luke, let's open Luke 23. Luke, Luke 13, verse 23. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said, said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Men shall say, I attended services every, every Sunday, every Wednesday, prayer meeting every Friday, every camp meeting I was there. That's a different thing altogether. Mm -hmm. Have you entered through the narrow gate? Are you walking through the narrow path? That's the point. Yes. We can come to church. That is very possible. But everybody, we can attend care meetings. We can preach as we are. But on which way am I preaching on? On which way are you attending services on? Is it the narrow or the wide gate? But outside there, they are preaching. They are holding these Bibles. May God help us. Amen. Finally, note that Jesus tells us that there are two destinations. Destruction. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Paul wrote, Paul wrote, of everlasting destruction in Thessalonians 2, 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God help us. There is going to be vengeance. Not just an effort. It's not about the effort we, we, we put. It must be the right type of effort. In Matthew 5 says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. But... Uh, chapter 6, verse 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Finally, we note that Jesus tells us about the, de the two destinations, the broad and the way that leads to destruction. Upon those who who not know God, upon those who obey not the gospel of Jesus Christ, John described it as the lake of fire. Revelation 20, 15 says, And whosoever not found written in the book of life was, was, was cast into the lake of fire. May God help us. Amen to walk and choose the right road. Most, the most sobering thought are these words of Jesus. 
There are men who go in by it. Life. Difficult is the way which leads to life. This life is the everlasting life received at the end, at the judgment. It is the gift of God given at the end. Romans 6, verse 22 and 23. To those who were set free from sin, to those who become slaves of God's righteousness, to those who bore the fruit of holiness. Another sovereign theme are words about the way that leads to, to life. The other sovereign thing is there are few who find it. May God help us. Amen. As we close, we want to just summarize and see what Jesus said in conclusion. So we have seen that Jesus describes two gates, two ways, two groups, two destinations. May God help us to make a choice. Amen. Are you on the right way? That leads to, to life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, verse 6. The way that provides, the way that he provides is narrow. For it requires that people keep his commandments. May God help us. Amen. Will you be among the few or many? Let that lead, let God lead you to the way of life. May God help you Amen. and make the right choice this morning. Amen. It is possible. No, no matter what, if you have got Jesus the emblem of righteousness, you will be able to walk in this narrow way. Yeah. Avoid the wide one which leads to destruction. God is waiting. Yes. To, he's looking. Mm. And he wants to hold your hands. Yes. God help you. Amen. The, op the altars are open. Jesus will direct you along the narrow way that leads to eternal life. Amen. Father, we thank you. Oh Lord, this afternoon you've spoken to us again. Like Moses said, 
There are two ways before us, the way of life and the way of death. He adjourned that we should choose life. Help us to choose life this afternoon, O oh Lord. Come and speak to our hearts. Turn our hearts to your side. Bless us, O oh Lord, and make us a blessing. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.